Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we're hanging out a little bit in the VAB today because we have a Saturn transfer window coming up soon. Uh, by soon, I mean in like 200 days, so it's going to be a while before we get there. But uh, I figured that since we've got uh, some more tech uh, that has been unlocked and some more sciencey things since our launch of our last two Saturn probes, that we should uh, we should build something specific and for a specific purpose, sorry. Uh, and I was thinking that maybe we try to get a lander down on Titan, because it, uh, it seems to be the next logical course of action. So uh, I'm going to try to build something out here and prepare for a, uh, a pile of sped up footage. But um, I'll try to get a voiceover in on this one. So I'll pick you guys up in uh, like just a few minutes. All right, well, uh, initially I started with this uh, Surveyor Corps, but uh, ultimately decided that it uh, probably wasn't going to work for my purposes so well. This is just uh, kind of a flash consideration, but I decided to go with the uh, one-ton pro bus. <coughs> Sorry. And, uh, of course, the essential part of any lander is the uh, landing legs. Uh, it will be powered by a single RTG that should give us uh, more than enough oomph. Now, the complicated part about this mission is that uh, we're not going to have direct contact with the lander down to Earth, and we're going to have to bounce the signal off the orbiter. So it's just getting this uh, this little dish. We'll add some other antennas later, and we're just going to finish out our science loadout with basically uh, all the goodies that we can squeeze onto this thing. Yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to need room for parachutes and a heat shield up there too, so make sure that articulates well enough. And then our uh, low-range antennas, uh, the two of them combined, should give us uh, plenty of oomph. And then, uh, yeah, finishing out some of the science experiments, uh, the hydrogen data sampler and a magnetometer placed precariously on the side. We're basically just trying to find a weight balance between these science uh, experiments that'll work for us. Although, really, um, the center of mass on this part doesn't matter a whole lot, although it's, if it's a little offset, I'm not going to be uh, too terribly disappointed. We can use that uh, we can use that to our advantage when we're trying to aerobrake through the atmosphere uh, and deorbit, and uh, hopefully we won't be coming down at screaming fast speeds. But to be very honest with you, I know absolutely nothing about the makeup of Titan. So I, I guess I have some homework to do as far as uh, reading up on where we're going and what kind of uh, systems I'm going to need to break through the atmosphere and land safely. Um, I don't know if you guys have any suggestions. I'd always love to hear from you, but uh, I will be doing some, some reading on my own, hopefully. Uh, I'm assuming that having three parachutes on this uh, will be sufficient, I guess, to uh, get us down safely. But, I don't know, <laughs> this is just uh, setting up the parachutes, getting their altitudes programmed in. And just in case they're not quite enough or we need a little extra uh, kick in the pants to help slow us down, we've got these four 1 kilonewton thrusters. They'll all be burning uh, aerosene and N2O. Uh, they're tuned up to about 1.8 kilonewtons of thrust piece. But just to save and make sure that our weight is looking good, I had dropped some of the fuel from the uh, core itself. All right, now, uh, the <clears throat> this is going to be, I'm hoping this will be enough to get us down to the surface, and now the real trick on how to do the rest of this, uh, as far as aerobraking, capture into Titan's orbit, the deorbit maneuver for this thing, and I feel like the most efficient way to do it is just through sheer aerodynamic forces. We're going to try to heat shield our way in as much as possible, so... Uh, I'm going to try to tuck these in to get them under this fairing, although it's not exactly the look I was going for. As you can tell, like it's not really very aeroshell-esque. This is a little bit better, but uh, it doesn't do a whole lot for us. We'll go ahead and get our lunar-rated heat shield mounted up top there, make sure it covers everything. Yeah, so far, so good. And uh, now we need to deal with the avionics, but before I forget... I should probably put some RCS thrusters on here. Also tuned for aerosene and N2O. And another set because I can't do the four times without it running into a bunch of other stuff. So I'm hoping that those will be uh, sufficient. Now we're going to need uh, a little bit of extra uh, probe cordage to uh, make our tonnage requirements with this uh, heat shield on here. So a surveyor core and uh, was that a ranger block something core. All right, 
and that's our lander. Hopefully that little guy will be going down to Titan and doing some magical things for us. Now this is the part that weirded me out. I have to flip these upside down to get them to work. So, that's not too terrible, right? No, not at all. Alright, and uh, it's time to build out our transfer stage and our orbiter portion, which may not be the transfer stage, uh, thinking about it. I might need all of its delta V to do uh, in-orbit maneuvers and things of that nature. So, I'm considering putting uh, another AJ-10 stage below this one or below this uh, orbiter portion. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> it's the difference between launching on a DN-1A or something uh, with a little more gruff behind it, maybe the DN-1B with its uh, J-2 upper stage. Uh, I don't think we'll need something as massive as the DN-5. Especially, I don't know, this thing doesn't weigh a whole hell of a lot, but putting that much horsepower behind something like this might be a little bit of overkill. Anyway, for long-range comms, we're going with the uh, the Pioneer dish. Um, we should be well within its range, and its power consumption is less of that of the Voyager dish. It's just a matter of powering everything when we're that far away from the sun. Um, I'm hoping two RTGs will be enough to run the comms. Of course, once we're in orbit, we can deactivate the avionics on that Agena core. That'll, uh, that'll save us a little bit of it, but now it's just this awkward thing about having a side-mounted dish that uh, having to build around it is kind of inconvenient, but I'm generally pretty happy with the way uh, I got this tuned in and dialed to work. It's just uh, it made the part count kind of go a little bit higher than I would have liked, but... I'd say st at this point most of the part count is still science experiments, which you can't really do a whole hell of a lot about. Anyway, we've got the long-range comms to getting communicating with Earth. We'll still need something to communicate with the lander or to bounce signals off of some of our other uh, satellites that will be in orbit of Saturn. So to do that, we're going to be using these um, two retractable dishes. It's just a matter, again, of finding the weight balance. We need to just offset the weight of the dish, which... Conveniently, this uh, mapping equipment here from Scansat does a pretty good job of. We do need to offset it a little bit, but I think with those retractable dishes placed uh, a little differently, um, more towards the satellite end, it should work, I'm hoping. But uh, just to get a feel for our center of mass so far, or with everything, uh, I wanted to go ahead and get an engine mounted. It's an AJ-10 Advanced. Oh, I forgot to switch the model of AJ-10 to the appropriate one. See, it's a good thing I did this voiceover. I totally would have missed that. <laughs> and RCS thrusters. I really wanted to use these, but they clipped through the dish, and I don't feel like that's fair, even though when they are deployed, they would totally not clip through the dish. And seeing as how the placement of things on, you know, with asymmet asymmetry on the, si on the equipment makes everything weird. Uh, I had to go with a much less efficient RCS configuration than I would have liked. But uh, yeah, there it is. They're also all set up for aerosene and uh, nitrogen tetroxide. Same uh, fuels burned by the AJ-10. So back to the comms again. These retractable dishes. We're going to mount uh, a little bit closer to the comms dish in hopes that that just tips our center, uh, our center of mass just enough to uh, balance us out versus the uh, scanning equipment and the comms equipment. Then we've got our short range comms for communicating with the lander and other things in orbit. And uh, then it's just time for a paint job. So we'll uh, pick some shiny colors here and call it a day. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Little adjustments to the tank. Now we'll call it a day. All right, well, uh, I I think this is uh, about it. Uh, we have a orbiter section and we have our lander section. We have a heat shield for hopefully capturing into Titan's orbit and then for deorbiting uh, the bug. And we have the uh, orbital section that will uh, hopefully stay in orbit of Titan, make a map of it, and be able to relay comms back home for uh, this little guy who will hopefully make it all the way down to the surface. Uh, this is this mission is going to be uh, very lengthy, several, several years in the uh, process of 
not only flying out to Saturn, but uh, getting our alignment just right. Yeah, you know the whole deal. But um, so I think I'm okay with this design. I'm actually, this is kind of cool looking, I think. Um, yeah, and stuff. But uh, what it does need is a name, and that's where you guys come in. So, because I'm really bad with naming conventions, so uh, we're going to need two names. We're going to need one for the uh, orbiter section. We're going to need one for the lander section. Um, oh, man, those things got moved. That's not good. Collision physics being what they are. We can put those back up to about there, and hopefully they'll stay put. I know things tend to jump out of the... Uh, fairing, top end, or, or what have you, uh, when we go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just check. Total weight on this is only just a, a hair under 14 tons, so this isn't uh, this isn't too bad as far as things that we can fling a long way away. But anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments, uh, if you have a name suggestion or anything like that. Uh, just as a placeholder, I'm going to put uh, Titan uh, Atmospheric Explorer. Uh, just so I can save this file and come back to it and put it under a rocket and uh, hopefully get this little guy prepped for a launch uh, in the, about 200 days or so. So uh, sorry for the sh super short episode, but uh, that's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I and oh, before I forget, let's check in on our little Mars rovery guy. He has been uh, roving like he has never roved before. I've got about five days worth of waypoints. He's headed southward bound to explore new biomes and do bunches of awesome things, hopefully, provided, of course, MechJeb doesn't kill him. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. I'll see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.